This is the second generation Audi A3 made between 2003 and 2013, also known as the 8P. This convertible version was released in 2008 when the car had a facelift. I'm going to tell you what's good and bad about it, and as I like to end on good news, let's start with the bad. The cam chain on the 1.8 and 2 litre petrol variants are known to fail and cause catastrophic engine failure. You can replace the cam chain and you can fit an uprated chain tensioner to prevent this happening, but it is expensive. The next bad thing is another engine problem, and it's to do with the 1.8 and 2 litre petrol engines again. There's three generations of engines, and the second generation is known to consume oil because of weaker piston rings. I believe they fitted weaker piston rings in an attempt to improve fuel consumption, but you ended up using lots of oil instead. However, if you have a first or third generation engine, it's not such a problem. If you look at the first three letters of your engine code, that should help you determine what generation your engine is. Look it up on the internet to find out. This, however, is a first generation engine, so should be fine. The next bad thing about this car for me is their choice in automatic gearbox. They use a dual clutch system with flappy paddles. Now, the flappy paddles are okay because you can change up and down gears pretty quickly, but it's not as smooth as the traditional torque converter automatic and it's nowhere near as reliable either. However, changing the gearbox oil every 40,000 miles can help with that reliability. Another big problem I have with Audi of this era is their lack of standard equipment. For a premium car, even their top spec models don't get much for free. You have to pay extra for everything like cruise control and heated seats. Now for a car in 2009 that cost £23,000, I'd expect that to be standard. The first owner on this car paid for a Bose sound system. I personally wouldn't bother. It's not that it's bad, it is better than the standard system, but it really isn't worth any extra money. Opting for the convertible will mean you'll lose quite a lot of boot space, and the opening is quite small. However, that moves me on to the good points of this car. And despite it having a small boot, it's actually not bad for a convertible, and the roof doesn't eat into the boot space. And there's also these handy tabs you can pull to push down the rear seats, and this one here, to give you more room to load longer items. Now, another common complaint about convertibles, which this car doesn't really suffer from, is scuttle shake. So scuttle shake is when the front of the car doesn't quite feel connected to the rear of the car. So it kind of moves independently and doesn't feel very nice. However, this car feels very solid and I don't think it really suffers from it much at all. Well done, Audi. Now, this is normally a disadvantage for a car, but I kind of think it's an advantage for the Audi. And that's all the extra weight they've had to add to get rid of that scuttle shake. Now you see, the A3 has never really been a very sporty car or really a very comfortable car in my opinion. It's not really been very good at either of those things. However, adding all this extra weight seems to have made it a lot more comfortable because engineers find it a lot easier to make a heavy car ride smoothly. And I think it's paid dividends in this car. Back to the roof. Well, it is a convertible, so it's probably one of the main reasons why you're buying the car. Anyway, when this car was first sold, it was the fastest roof on sale. It takes only nine seconds to lower and you can do it up to speeds of 20 miles an hour. However, it does take 12 seconds to put it back, which I think is more important for obvious rainy reasons. The seats are super comfy, got loads and loads of adjustment in them, and you can go up loads and down loads. Also, there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel as well, if you wanna go up and down and in and out. So it doesn't really matter what size you are, you're gonna find this car comfortable. This is something that Audi are brilliant at. The interior is a really nice place to be. There's good materials everywhere. You really feel like you're in a bit more of a premium place. And as a result, it ages really well as well so that the plastics don't scratch as easily. So if you scuff one of the door cards or something, you can normally just clean it out. And as a result, it stays looking new for years. Another great thing about this car is its choice of engines. You get quite a choice. So if you want something fast or economical, you're catered for. I would go with a 1.8 turbo because it's fairly economical. It does 30 to 40 miles of the gallon and it's really smooth and has all the power you ever need. It is a bit more expensive to maintain, but for me, that's worth it. Most of these cars are fitted with dual zone climate control, even the base models. That's something that Audi was generous with, which I think is wonderful because if your passenger doesn't want to be the same temperature as you, no one needs to suffer. Sticking to the heater, it's a good one, which is great because on a chilly morning like this in autumn, it's a nice sunny day. I can take the roof off, put the heater on, and it's now a nice warm sunny day. And the heater's free. Your engine wastes a lot of heat anyway, 
So you may as well put that wasted heat to some good use and be lovely and comfortable. So if you value comfort over handling, like the look of the car, want a convertible and don't mind spending a bit of extra money on preventative maintenance before things go horribly wrong, I think this could be a lovely car to own. However, if reliability and maintenance costs are the top of your priority, look elsewhere. If you think I did a good job, like the video and subscribe to get my future videos. See you on the next one.